holla YouTube. I'm back after a uh, enforced hiatus. Anyway, what's been happening with the car? Um, bits, actually. Bits. Hang on, let's get some light in here. Boom. There we go. So, roll cage and headrests fitted. I've been putting some sound deadening foam in all the gaps and then just covering it with tape because it's a neat solution that I'm able to come up with and just getting rid of all the, as many, sorry, not all of, but as many of the rattles that I can do. Still got these holes here to fill. Um, and this, albeit not covered in tape, makes it really noisy. Um, so what are we doing today? Apologies, I got interrupted. As you may have noticed, or maybe not, looking into the coal hole, there are no harnesses in there. They are off being reworked, readjusted and made good um, by a man. So he just called. Yeah, so track days, I stay out too long, get my brakes too hot and it seems to have killed yet another master cylinder. So rather than another 25 quidder, I've gone for an AP one, which is... I mean, including the reservoir, and I've got another reservoir in case that one's too big. It was 200 quid, so significantly more money. But if you think a 25 pound master cylinder, I mean, someone's got to make a profit off it. Well, the retailer's got to make a profit. The manufacturer's got to make a profit. It, it, probably the parts aren't very good. So I talked myself in with man maths to that. So I'm going to get that fitted tonight so I whip the carbs off and um, empty my reservoir that's going to go I'll have the the other one will sit just here so it won't impede my cold airflow I'll get more power but uh, yeah I'll bring you back when I've got the carbs off and I'm fiddling around oh that was nice and uh, easy we've got the carbs off Reservoir gone and bolted. Um, just about to undo these, which is basically wedging a spanner in and undoing it from the inside. Not too hard, but yeah, I'd like to see you Weber boys do it that quickly. Aha. The advantage of having an inferior inlet manifold. You can get shit done quicker. Right, I will um, I'll buzz this off and then we'll fit the APA. There's the spanner nicely wedged. I hope I've got that the right way around. I think I have. So I'll just buzz it off from the inside. And we should have it out in a jiffy. That's the top one off. I didn't check the time, but... Well, there it is, seven minutes past six. Let's see how long it takes me to get the bottom one off. Right. Time check, less than two minutes. I think it's come off. Yeah. Yeah, both bolts are off. Um, so now I've got to go back in and we've got to release, release the clevis pin. As you can see, like the bottom one's pretty easy. The top one you've got to thread through, but having a electric tool makes it easy because every time you do that with a ratchet, you risk knocking the spanner off the other side. But yeah, that was that was really nice. Nice job. So got to take the clevis pin off and then remove the master cylinder, swap the rods over, put it back in, which is slightly harder than taking it off. So we'll see how we get on. Right, there's the pin out, and just as a time check, 11 minutes past the hour, and out it comes. So I've knocked that off already, so I'm just going to take it off and screw it, and um, hmm, I think it should, shouldn't leak too much. Fingers crossed. All right, 13 minutes past, and it's leaking on the floor, but it's off. So I'm going to remove this, swap it over, and put the new one in. 
So for anyone who hasn't done this before, I'm going to attempt to do it with one hand. Now I know the AP one's got a nice circlet, so is this one. So you want a set of either internal or external pliers. I forget what the, which way round they call them. But these ones will pull the circlet in. Actually, look. Is that covered in brake fluid? Is that wet? Hmm. If it is, it's not very wet. Right, so there's one. So now we've got to take the AP one off. Apologies, it's it's not in focus. I'm trying to, trying to do this with one hand. There we go. That's off. Let's pull this one out. Now, this is a much nicer seal. But is it going to go over here? Because it's got, it will have to go over that washer or over this fork. I mean, I can try. Let's see if I can get it off. Yes, boy. A little bit of persuasion. She went right on. Of course, it was all going too well. This bore is larger on the AP, so you have to use the AP um, snap E well, circlet. You can see a bit bigger, but it's too big to go around the existing washer, so it won't hold it in. So I might might have to chop this and weld it onto the end of that. I don't know. I'm gonna have a think. put the circlips underneath one another so it effectively widens the washer and it's held in by the top one which spins freely in the groove as it should if anyone thinks this is a really bad idea shout the video will be out long before I drive the thing on the road so if I've done something stupid let me know but it feels like it's stupid but logic dictates it'll work fine that's not an issue right see how we get on no problems Bolt's too long by, I'd say about half an inch. I think I've got a spacer, so I think I might be able to space that out. As always, I got too cocky, thinking the job would be too easy. And now, getting that on and tight without interfering with this is proving difficult. I've got the bottom one on, so it's, it's solid, um, which is good, but, finished it is not so I'm going to tighten this up and just check that it's still got enough clearance then we'll deal with that all right well it's tight so it's on the missing piece of the puzzle is tightening this up with no problems which don't ever take that for granted um, I'm getting this in it was starting to feel like it was cross-threading, but the threads look great. So, I don't know what to say. It went on beautifully on the bench, as they always do. But now, Let's see if I can film it. I'm doing it without the O-ring, but look, you see the way it's... Isn't going in true. Now, I do have a smaller one. So, um, hold on, I'll go and grab it. As predicted, the smaller one's going on beautifully. So, the thread is obviously at it on the big one. And I wanted the big one, so I figured it would be 
better to have more fluid, but also easier to bleed. I'm not having to get up all the time, walk around the car and top it up. Oh, bloody hell. I'll see if I can save this. I'm going to put the O-ring on, because if I do save it, I don't want to have to take it off again. down as square as I can. Turn it anti-clockwise, I feel it bed in. Go on, you fucker. I don't understand how it went on beautifully. I took it off and then it's cross-threaded. I haven't, I haven't even put it back on. You see, it then just goes off. Take the lid off, I'm causing problems. Well, I can't. It's chewing it up, it's knackered. Can't use that because it's my brake reservoir, isn't it? I can't not have that good so might as well use the fresh o-ring in the new one oh the other one's even being tightened down oh who else loves cars hang on is that gonna fall out yeah it is now let's put the o-ring on to the master like that and just use all of my mechanicing skill put this on square you see that wasn't even the slightest bit difficult right so it says tight and then give it a half turn there we go that's tight and i didn't even give it more than half a turn but hopefully that doesn't leak. Put the lid on. Oh, for fuck's sake. These things, they weren't cheap either. They were like 20, 28 quid each. That just span when I did that up. Hmm. I don't know. I think that might leak. Anyway, only one way to find out. Tighten this up and fill it up. And just so there's evidence, I managed to do three, four, maybe five turns by hand. And this is going in ever so easily. So I think we've got no problems here. This can be nipped up. Nicely. Right, there it goes. That's tight now, so I'll just give it a... A little bit. Hopefully, it's all right. It just needs a cotter pin in the clevis, which I'll do now. Well, I'll fill this up first. So then I can give it a bit of time to start leaking. If it wants to leak while I do the cotter pin. And I'm putting type 200, which apparently, I've heard from a few sources, is the basically the dog bollocks of dot four fluid so it's not 5.1 or anything it's just normal fluid but it's you have to concentrate hang on right if it was leaking it would bubble wouldn't it no bubbles. Yeah, apparently this stuff is the is the mustard. But seeing as my brakes were so bloody bad on the track day I did with it, um, I didn't get to test it. It wasn't a fluid issue, by the way, because the brakes were bad before I changed the fluid. I think it was my master cylinder. Which, by the way, yeah, it's really flush. The AP one, it's spilling. The AP one pops out, but this one's flush. 
don't know. I don't know what a good one's going to feel like, so I'm going to figure that out. I don't know. Right. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully that's all right. Let's go and put that clevis pin in. Cotter pin, split pin. I did actually find this on the floor, which um, would just be from random garage spares. So it might fit and save me a job. It's going up there. Right, use that. Will he go in? No, he's too big. It'll be proper dangerous Daniel. Reuse the old one. No, Oliver. No, we shan't reuse the old one. We'll take the old one to get the same size. Not when I carry these bloody things in, in stock. Hang on while I dig one out. Yep. Got a new one. I am a professionale. Alright, we'll jam. Jam him up there. Like so. Then use that to bloody hell. Right, we're done inside. So these can come out, leave our working area. Lovely, nice and clean. And then, um, yeah, I suppose it's give it a few pumps and see what happens and see if we've got any leaks coming out of there. So throttle. Let's check for seepage and leakage. And it is. It's absolutely bone dry. Oh, that is a bit of fluid, but I think, I think that's come out of the, the main pipe. Let's give it a wipe down. Not quick. Quick spray. And a rewipe. And we all know how important a rewipe is. Pumper pumps. Pedal, if I'm being brutally honest, feels awful. But I'm hoping that's because there's a gob full of air on the bloody thing. All right, let's have a look down. We'll give them a bleed. Alright, it's up in the air. Just going to uh, clap the tea, give it a bleed, and see how we get on. Right, 
ages later, I enlisted the help of a child to help me bleed them up. And they bled up nicely. The problem I've got is when you tighten this cap down, you then tighten the bottom down. And I'm worried that is wrecking the thread because, I mean, you can do it carefully, but if you're on a track day and you just like, yeah, quick tie it up and you nip it up with your hand, you, you overcome that thread really easily. It really needs to be, um, needs to be metal, basically. And I don't see how that can be overcome because if there are ones with a metal adapter, but this screws into the metal adapter itself. So you're gonna have the same problem just further up. Um, the pedal doesn't feel that great, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I mean, proof of the pudding will be in the driving, but it still feels like it's got that dead travel at the top before anything happens. Um, so I'm sure it didn't used to be there. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not bloody imagining things. I mean, I might be, but I don't know. But it's like you've got, you've got that and then there's braking. The problem was when I was braking on Bedford, I was struggling to get over and blip. I don't know, maybe, I mean, that, I don't know, I don't know, maybe the pedal can be pulled out a bit or this can be pulled in. I don't know, I don't know, but I'm not overjoyed, put it that way. Half nine sodding thing i've been out for my my evening stroll and i've decided i don't like this because i just can't trust that it's tight can i i don't know i was kind of half expecting to find it's leaked but it hasn't but look look when i've undone it then look whole thing spins That can't be right, can it, guys? It's got to be what I would term... Hang on, let me get some light. It's got to be suboptimal. Suboptimal. But then again, you know, imagine we're in the world and everything's fine. I can check. Yep, that's got fluid in it. I don't need to be undoing it. And when I do, hang on, let me rest my phone, my professional camera equipment, I can just hold that. Unscrew it. Go yes. See, is that lower than what I left it? Doesn't seem particularly high. In fact, I'd probably leave it like that, and you can see the line. And then hand goes in underneath the carb, hand comes through, phone falls over. Bloody hell. Then we just give it a little, a little jimmy, and then it's done. Um, right, now we move on to problem number two. I'll put a break in the film here. Right, problem number two, which I think I have a solution for, is the... Ugh. And, by the way, what an amazing situation that you can remove the, the rod without removing the master cylinder. I mean, isn't that just the best? Um, you can just, just about get your circlip pliers in. And yes, this is horribly untidy, and I'm gonna cut it all back, because it looks, looks minging. Um, so, essentially, there is a load of dead travel. Now, the pedal as I had it, the rod, this bit is obviously got the washer and then I had to have two circlips. So 
it wasn't coming all the way out to meet the pedal. So the pedal was already down like to about there. So I've already lost maybe half an inch at the at the foot. And then the cylinder you can actually push so it's flush with the body and there's no braking effort whatsoever. You can actually go a little bit beyond it. I pushed it down and got my door to spin the wheels. So I know that that is probably, there's no braking effort happening for most of that. So I can take that out with the, the AP rod and basically set it so that it's about there. You know what I mean. So when the pedal is at its high high point, it's just above engaging the brakes. So what I've done is I've bought a 5 16th clevis and pin and clip and then I will have to figure out whereabouts that wants to be and then this will require a little bit of trimming and then the AP lock nuts will keep it tight where it needs to be and um, yeah we will be will be golden we will be glodden hopefully so um, so yeah had a very thorough bleed and everything was I mean in my opinion bled as well as it feasibly could be um, I think I went round it three maybe four times and on the last two goes there was just not even a hint of air coming out even at the beginning so I'm confident we're good as long as the reservoir is okay and we get this clevis pin stroke rod position because I'm trusting in this rod which isn't original to a car you know this came on the master cylinder that I replaced because I filled it full of brake fluid remember that not brake fluid gear oil so I replaced the master cylinder and just reused the rod because the new master cylinders come with this and I needed a clevis and then I reused this one on the subsequent master cylinder which I've just taken off so you know I think that I need to do that and then we'll be all right so yeah I might actually just call that quits for this video and put another one out when the bits arrive so good to be back see you later guys couldn't resist i've done a bit more i've blocked this hole up oh let me do a little spin around so i've put um, this stuff really high density like memory foam for furniture um I've used this stuff before because it's fireproof or fire warranted or whatever and it's cheap and you know at the end of the day you know there's daylight out there but you know this is right next to my ear um so it, it it's a lot of noise so i've put a big block in taped it down and then done the same here so it's it doesn't need to be a great job oh you can see these as well you know, where I've just sealed in the, the roll cage. Um, and down here as well. Just to make it as bearable as possible. So that I don't go deaf, basically. And also, I can't remember if I showed this, but I had the fire extinguisher about an inch off the ground for some reason. Then it's like, well, if I mount it there, then this moves about this. Put that bolt in. And I bet... I reckon there's a rattle there. You know, it all resonates a lot, but it's not rattling. And it's just when you go over, a, you know, some bumps, you just don't want the whole thing crashing around like there's a fucking toolbox in the back. But that's all I want. Um, this needs replacing. Um, I've looked online for the same profile, can't find one. So... 
I might just leave it. Um, other than that, yeah, just waiting for the, the brake bits, but that won't be till next week. I've ordered them, but they're gonna be two to three days. Um, so assuming brakes, assuming that works, I'm just gonna wait for the harnesses to come back and then it's test drive. Then it's ready for track day. I can't remember the dates. I think I'm at Blyton with the Yorkshire Lotus Club on the 12th and then Landau on the 16th. So looking forward to those. This an area I started to polish up. I mean, it's so much smoother here, but you can see the sanding marks. Sorry, I'm getting distracted, but so I only have 1500 grit paper. So I've ordered 2000 and 3000 and I've got a wall pad and we'll polish it up. One of my side projects this year is to get the paint more presentable. So bits like this, I'll just polish. That, I need to get a profile for the wing before I can fix that. But I'll paint the bumper and then just bits like this. Just, you know, colour it in. Doesn't need to be mint, just make it look a bit nicer. Right, I really am going this time. Bye-bye.